are extremely uneven, please mind the floors, um, it is soft sand, it's up and down, it's all over the place. We've got different types of steps, we've got stone steps, we've got timber steps, we've got concrete steps, we've got different heights in treads and rises, it's all over the shop, please don't fall over. Uh, secondly, please don't touch the walls, they are incredibly soft, believe it or not, albeit holding you above your head, and you'll, you'll see how soft the walls are as we go further on into the system. Um, Third rule, please children behave because Hector hasn't had any breakfast yet and he's getting a bit peckish, but you'll meet Hector as we go round. And if you're nice to him, he'll be good, he'll be good. And one extra special rule, I have a gas lamp, which is highly unusual because Rob's nicked all the other lamps. Uh, beware of it, it, it will burn, okay? It's extremely hot, so mind, mind me carrying it round, please. What we'll do is we'll go right to the top of the system. I'll carry on the to the top and then we'll work our way back around the system and obviously back out the way you've come in. So we go right to the top and hopefully your eyes should have customised to the light as we go. Um, if we keep over to the right hand side then we can go past Rob because he's finishing his part of the top end of the tour. So if we move on. Old Sally Port to an old secret tunnel from the old castle. Um, this wouldn't have had steps when it was originally dug. It would have been a smooth surface. Um, the castle originally was dug around sometime after 1088 in the sort of 11th stroke 12th century. Um, the land was owned by William de Warren and he was given huge areas of land around the, air, around the area uh, from William the Conqueror as a thank you. Uh, the castle when it was first built was timber which lasted a hundred years or so and then fell apart basically because they didn't have tantalised wood in those days. And then it was built of stone which lasted obviously a few hundred years. The castle then was eventually pulled apart um, and what was left from the people robbing the stone for their own back garden walls. Uh, the last remaining wall was pulled apart by a guy called Barnes who used what he could salvage to build the folly that's in the castle grounds at the moment that's called, I think it's called Castle something, but that is a folly built by Barnes in the 1700s. So this would have been smooth. Um, we have an original bit of ceiling above you up here. I haven't got a torch to point it out, I'm afraid. Um, this bit um, in here, which is a brick arch, which was built in by the Victorians, because the Victorians opened it up as a show cave. Uh, they probably would have cut the whole top off, then put the, the brickwork in, and then covered it over again, over the top. And they would have put the steps in as well. Uh, the two brick arches that were put in here were put in about five or six years ago by Rygate Council for absolutely no reason whatsoever but to show off their brick skills and call them. <laughs> uh, waste your money, yes, and mine. And it supports absolutely nothing. Uh, but they thought it was going to fall in. So it's a very nice bit of brickwork but serves absolutely no purpose because it's <laughs> never moved and never will. Um, we'll move back down. Uh, if you go down to the bottom of the steps and then turn right into the big passage. But when you go around the corner, just look straight down and imagine that's what it was like as a sally port or the entrance or the exit when it was the castle in the 1100s with a smooth surface and just a nice vaulted arch. And they would go down and they could either go into the dry moat, which is where you came in, um, and either run away or attack from behind if the castle was under attack. So you had a dry moat down the bottom because you're in sand, and up the top, at the top end of the castle ground, you still got the wet moat, and there is a clay bed between the two, so obviously the wet moat still stays up there. The fact that the council dug out the wet moat last year to clean it and tidy it, and they haven't, I suppose they can't refill it at the moment because of the drought problems, which is fair enough, will give them the benefit of the doubt there. But it looks such a mess at the moment. But when it's full of water, it's, um, it, it does look quite pretty. But that was the, the wet moat of the castle. And where you came in and out would have been considerably smaller than that. So if we go back down to the bottom of the steps, and I'll carry on from there. <laughs> 
elsewhere. Okay, that's too much. It's complete rubbish because you're nowhere near. <laughs> you're actually, where it says down here, ventilation pipe in the ceiling, <laughs> that ventilation pipe in the ceiling is, this, is, is the big cast iron pipe you kick in front of our desk at the front. There's actually two whole systems below us, <laughs> but unfortunately they're backfilled with sand, so you can't get in them. Do we have any Rygate people that have been here for a while? It's not a problem. Uh, A25 towards Dorking. A25, M25 running up. A25 runs right over the top of what was Scutt's wine bar. There used to be a wine bar down in, in one of the caves. And with the onset of the bigger juggernauts and what have you, and the surface, the soffit level of the cave and the substrata of the road surface was just too shallow and it was starting to do damage and bits were falling off the cave. So there was a compul uh, compulsory purchase and they backfilled its guts with sand um, plus something to set it off as well. I don't think it was just cement. But because they got a grant and they had so much money left over, they thought they'd do the whole system as well. So they did. So we can't get into any of it. This was used in the Second World War um, as um, ammunition stores and storage, etc. Uh, but it's all backed in, hence it was a ventilation shaft, as it said, breather rises and what have you. And this was a third level that was down below that again. And they did find some water, and there obviously was water then, but considerably deeper than where you are now, or where we are now anyway. Great shame that we can't get in there anymore. And ironically, they filled it in with buckling sand from <coughs> just up the road. <laughs> now the sand itself, um, <coughs> What you're in here is a Victorian illegal sand mine where they've dug the sand out from the side. So that passage just went at one time, we just went straight down. The Victorians discovered that you've got really good sand um, and it was used as a scouring agent for scouring pots and pans or front doorsteps and what have you. Um, but when you dry it out and you take the moisture out of it, it goes from that green to a lovely golden yellow and you get an exceptionally pure silver sand which is used in glass making and um, if you hold your hand out madam so it's used in glass making and it's used in our glasses because it's so fine oh wow it's so fine just chuck it on the ground after oh, yeah. some more oh, <laughs> want to feel how soft it is that's the sand and that's when it's dried out so that's the best clay pit sand you'll ever get. I think we got a bit spared. Yours is not too much ago. Easy dig one, couldn't we, I suppose? Yeah. We can do our own, yeah. Um, if you come over to this corner over here, you can see just how soft the walls actually are. You know, courtesy of the BBC. Um, and I understand the lads had huge trouble explaining to the police <laughs> as they were carrying him across the top of the castle grounds what they were doing with the bloody great dinosaur. <laughs> but, uh, he's never tried to run away, he's stayed there quite comfortable. We do feed him, as you can see, so he's alright. Um, if you go over to Merston, where the, 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 it, the band changes from the sand to an actual to a stone, because you've got a better compression, where you get the Rygate stone, or Merstham stone, or Hearthstone, or Firestone as it's called. Um, if you go over to Merstham, there's systems down there where there's over 10 miles of passage underground, obviously. Um, the stone comes out exactly the same green, it's hewn out of the ground. Uh, they would have pulled it out using originally ox um, and then ponies or horses, probably just the ponies. Um, and they would have open entrances, just like straight out into a cutting cut out rather than a shaft. They never had shaft entrances. The stone would dry naturally and would go this lovely yellow. Um, it's a stunning stone to carve, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. If you keep it indoors, it's magnificent. Um, if you go into St Paul's Cathedral, there's a lot of the Merstham stone in carving and it's perfect. If you put it outside on your, on your stone walls, the frost says, I shall eat it, and it does. And it has huge problems with frost resistance and that complete lack of, and it just keeps breaking down. You'll quite often see the mortar joints proud uh, and the actual edges of the stone where it's just been flaking away because the, the moisture's got in, water gets in through the cracks, 
it freezes and it just blows the surface off and it just keeps doing it on and on and again. We're actually working with the Royal Palace Agencies, Royal Historic Palace Agencies at the moment to try and identify exactly where and which mine uh, some of the stone has come out of because there's a huge amount in Hampton Court, um, St Paul's and also the Tower of London and what they're trying to do is identify the exact mine that the stone has come out of and we uncovered one about four years ago which is called Tower Wood which is on the um, side of the end, Rygate Hill as you come down in between the M25 and Rygate Hill itself there's a mine system we broke into up there uh, we dropped a shaft in about 20 feet of concrete shaft having dug it out with a big JCB with a huge extension arm we got into the system the palace's agency went in took their core samples and it's the wrong mine because what they want to do is find the exact mine so they can get the exact colour of the stone as it dries they will then take out five cubic metres or thereabouts of the stone in exactly the same way it was taken out four or five hundred years ago, totally traditional, and then rebuild the Tower of London on the bits or re redo the really bad bits where it's in desperate state of repair. So I just say good luck to them, fantastic, I love that. I don't like glass structures, I'm in the construction industry myself. Uh, give me stone any day. But here, if you want to come and have a go kids, you can see just how soft it is, look. And that's all it's holding up above your head. Have a go, look. Flake it away. And it keeps that lovely holding there. If you go over to Morriston, two number th uh, what we, we call it number three, it's on the, uh, at Bedlam's Bank off Rockshaw Road. Um, we do have a real dinosaur in there, actually. Um, don't ask me the name of it, but you can you can uh, crawl yourself into a bedding plane about 18 inches high, which is probably about three or four feet wide, and lie on your back, and you've got the jaws. Of, um, it's a plesiosaurus. It's, the, it's one of the fish types, so you can actually look, you can see the jaw jawline. Mm -hmm. That is a genuine dinosaur. So we do have a real one, <laughs> but he's about 10 miles that way. Interesting. <laughs> So if we move on back into the main passageway going down, I'll point out some of the, the better graffiti that we see in the mouth, we've got the eye and the ear. And then, if you imagine this chamber as just the straight passage through before this was dug out, uh, you've got a scrolling main here, and it stops there. So there may have been the whole thing there, we don't know. Could have been, yeah. They, they never seem to do the whole thing, unfortunately. Why? Why I don't know. But I would imagine it may have been there may have been a lot more detail going off, sort of, yeah. you know, round about here. Over here, we've got a marker where they would have put their not marker. They would have put their candles in uh, to work. Um, and you've got, as you say, you've got all the soot coming at the top because they didn't have torches in those days. They just had candles. So that's the only sort of light that we've got up there that they would have been working by. It has to be said, if you turn all these lamps off, that does make a lot of light, but they wouldn't have had that many candles because they had to pay for their own candles and everything. And they, they got nothing for free. They worked really hard. Yeah. That have been carved in here. This one is my favourite, because not only does he watch you this way, so he's watching where you are now, but he also watches you as you go past. <laughs> Weird, that one. How old, do you have any idea how old this graffiti is? No dates, unfortunately no dates. So you can't tell from the way it's hanging out? No, we think they may be um, replicas of coins of that age, and that's probably about the nearest, and somebody thinks one of them might be Caesar. But uh, there is some notes. Uh, well, actually got some notes that he's printed out because we weren't sure how busy we were going to be today and we knew we were extremely low on guides so uh, one, we did think we might actually um, let people do their own thing and wander around <coughs> and um, so we don't lose our voices and give them the, this set of guides so we might be able to give you some notes to go um, so and um, 
you used to, because it was a halfway point, so you used to um, get people stopping for lunch, change their horses. And indeed, the Prince Regent used to stop at the White Hart Hotel, which is now where Barclays Bank is, if you know Rygate. And um, people used to, used to stop off, and um, of course it was quite a busy, busy track, because um, in particular Prince Regent needed to get down to Brighton to see his pavilion and more importantly to see Mrs. Fitzherbert, <laughs> sort of Georgian Monica Lewinsky is the uh, most tactful <laughs> description I can, I can come up with. Um, and um, he needed to get down to Brighton, but he wasn't supposed to travel more than 50 miles um, from central London, and London to Brighton was more than 50 miles, and it was quite a hard trek. So at the time, all the turnpike trusts were lent on to make the roads better and straighten them. So now if you go down the A217, which is the line of the old turnpike road, it's now a straight line down to Gatwick, rather than all wiggly below Sidlow Bridge. And of course if you go north, if you know Kingswood, Tadworth, it's all straight lines, admittedly now dual carriageway, but straight. And Tunnel Road was the very last hurrah of it, cut in 1823, 1824, it's the oldest road tunnel in the UK, it's the last bit of road straightening. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, anyway, that's right. I'll try and put some lights on. Well, they actually stored down here. They don't know whether it was an ice store or a food store or even a dungeon. Now, if it was an ice store, they could have taken water from the from the moat. I said wet moat earlier, and we were talking about muscles. From the moat and, and created their ice that way. But it's huge. You could have stored so much food down here. You could have had ice to do the whole of the southeast of England. <laughs> And if it was a dungeon, you could keep a whole army down here because it's so big. Um, they do say it was carved by masons, so you've got, and there are obviously some sort of historical, um, sorry, religious connections because the end wall is vertical and it faces east and it has a bench running around the perimeter of it, which you'll see when we get down there in a minute. And I'm told that there is a strong religious connection for that. But you've got a perfect curve running over in elevation. You've got a perfect quarter circle running in plan, uh, and you've got what we call a dado rail running all the way around at the same height. And then if you look at this black line that's disappeared off around there, that side, and on the, on the other side, that's the original floor level as well. So it's just been walked out by the thousands of people coming through here over the years that's reduced that floor level. What was it cut? The earliest date we've got is 1644, which I'm just about <coughs> to show you. So probably before it's got, it's got to be before 1644 to have got to the end. So how many ovens remained when the castle was lifted? It must have been. Because um, you wouldn't have wasted space. But I don't think this was dug when the cut when the original castle was there. This was mm -hmm. dug after, long after. Um, there are mason's marks on the, on the sort of dado level as we go round, which I'll point out is about three at least. If we go down to the end, and I'll, I'll carry on down there. This one at one point would have been vertical, but it's just been hacked out and dug out with so many different people putting their initials on it, sort of other initials. But there's quite a few round here. Um, we've got an 1866 in there, we've got 1796 over there, uh, but our 1644 is the earliest date. Unfortunately, we don't know the meaning it was. We never get water down here. I say that it's not true. We very, very, very rarely get water down here. The last time it was wet, um, was when we had the severe flooding, was six years ago, when Lewis and all the sort of yeah. southeast of England took a severe beating with flooding. And we came in one Saturday morning to open up, and we got about two thirds of the way down, and we were paddling. And we got down to around here, and this was 18 inches of water, and it was just welling up from around there, absolutely clear. Is there a spring? Never been seen before, and it's never come back. Well, yes, there has to be. But what is even more strange is if you go about 100 feet that way and 50 feet deeper below us, you've got another system under the Mr. Exhaust um, car, um, car place, funnily enough, called Mr. Exhaust Cave. And that was absolutely bone dry. Not a drop of water in there at all. And there is only, there has to be some sort of clay in between. That's um, quite strange. 
But as stories and myths go, the Baron's Cave got its name. They reputedly the barons would meet down here prior to the signing of the Magna Carta and they would use this as a secret meeting place so nobody could hear what they were discussing or plotting and if they wanted a signal to the surface <coughs> they would drop a stone on the ground which was called the sounding stone which you could hear uh, anywhere in the system or more importantly outside the entrance if the entrance was being guarded and we've proved it, uh, Neil and I, the chairman, uh, we've been down here with 36 girl guides screaming at the tops of their voices. And girls can scream, can't they? And the noise down here was just deafening. But their leader could still hear the stone booming through the sand, standing outside the entrance. When, when we cleared the place out and to open it originally, we cleared out all the rubbish and the took that was left on the floors down here. Because a lot of people used to come in here over the years and there was a hippie commune in here at one point as well. Um, a woman came in and she said she'd been reading her grandmother's 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 diary and there was a report in, in the diary that this elderly lady had been taken around a cave in Rygate where she'd been demonstrated the sounding stone and when they checked through all the took and everything that they were chucking out, sure enough they found a great big round stone. So whether this is the stone or not we don't know, but if you drop it on the ground it reverberates right the way through all the walls and you'll hear it wherever you are. Wow. And if you get the right spot, which I never normally do on the first one, <laughs> it really does boom quite well. And it doesn't matter where you are, you can just hear it. <laughs> but it is a myth, unfortunately. It's not true. <laughs> right, if we meander back, I'll point out some of the... Um, more graffiti bits. Just up on your right hand side now you've got the mason's mark. So you've got one of the original mason's mark when this was carved. And there's three of those on the data row, as we call it, right at the top. And lots of these areas where it's crossed the top and bottom. If you look at the eye, it's crossed at the bottom there and the P is crossed at the bottom there. <coughs> the H there is crossed at the top and bottom, um, which has dropped out big stone yeah, there. Yeah. 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 yeah, more predominant there. Again, this bloke's put his name in this but no date. I don't think 1018 is right actually. <laughs> Just seen that one. And the L and the D there. The 1854. Mm -hmm. yeah. We just back here, which I actually missed. We got the all-seeing eye that the hippie commune drew. That's it. That's the one. Um, that's all I actually left. Somebody's done that. <laughs>